Hey guys, Anfinim here, and welcome back to another Minecraft video, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a more advanced look into the MC Edit program, and if you guys want a basic guide on how this program works, be sure to check the link in the description. I gave a more basic guide, more of like a how-to on how to, you know, get used to this program uh, in the description below. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a few more advanced tips and tricks, uh, you know, nudging, schematics, and changing up mob traps and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a level here. Here, and you're not going to see the first window that opens but when you hit open level you're going to get a little window where it opens up your map list and just go ahead and go into that folder and then select level.dat and that's the kind of thing I've explained in the previous video so be sure that you've seen that before you've seen this. So anyway, so as you guys can see, I am in Skitscape's world actually, and if you guys haven't checked out this world, it's pretty amazing. The mansion that he ended up making here was really quite something. But anyways, so let's just say for example, uh, if you guys have ever, you know, heard of schematics uh, with Minecraft, then you've probably wanted to know how to do it at one point or another. And this is one of the two programs that you can really do it with. Uh, the other one is World Edit, but it's a little bit more wonky to do it with. This one, it's a little more of a refined way to do it, and it's very sure of itself. I guess you could say. I don't even know if I worded that correctly, but I don't even care. Anyways, so yeah, let's just say, for example, I wanted to copy Skitscape statue out of this whole picture. Well, what I could do, you know, if, if I was just using basic, you know, basic schematic stuff, I could just try and randomly copy it and try and get lucky, and I'd end up copying half the landscape behind him and so much of Fod statue over here. Well, I and look, I even missed most of the arm over here. So this is the first thing that I'm going to show you guys, and that is how to nudge your selection. Uh, so if you notice above like the little uh, inventory style looking screen here You're gonna notice a thing called nudge and you're gonna see a blue icon that says nudge and a yellow icon that says nudge And what these correspond to is if you go to each corner of your selection You're gonna notice that there is a yellow box and you're gonna notice on the bottom side here There is a blue box and that's what these correspond to so if you go ahead and you click and hold the nudge button and then you can use either W, A, S, and D to move your selection like this. This is hitting the A key, the S key, which sort of moves it towards you and the W key does the reverse and it moves it, you know, further away from you. The D key shortens it and then the Q and Z key actually move that box up and down and that's more or less what I'm looking to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to the ground level here and then click on nudge then just move the selection until you can tell it's just about hit the ground here. Let's see if his arm is good. Alright, his arm seems pretty good. Alright, I'm going to go to right here. I want to make sure that just his head is selected. So, let's just select this and use the keys as such. There you go. Alright, there we go. Now let's head around to the back side here. So since that corner is all set, all I need to concern with myself with now is the yellow box, which is the other nudge tool. So I just hit the button here, and then hit it a whole bunch of times until I can see the head poking through the selection. And then just go around to the other side here, and then do the same thing. And the way that this actually works is it's sort of dependent on the direction in which you're looking at the square. So if you see the way I'm looking at this right now, all I have to do is hold the nudge key and then hit the A and D key as such. So the A pushes it to the left and the D pushes it to the right. But however, actually let me fix that there. However, if I come around to this side, hitting the A and D key also does this. So it's it very much depends on which way you're actually looking at your selection. So that's something that is very neat to note. Uh, it actually makes, you know, selecting this sort of stuff a breeze. So now that I have the statue properly selected here, notice I'm, I'm clipping the land a little bit, but I can't really avoid that because your selections are actually limited to a square but if you go down to the bottom menu here and then what is it let's see all right no it's actually not on the bottom i lied i lied i lied but okay so now with the selection properly selected on the left side if you hit the export schematic button it's going to bring up a little a little box in windows that you guys can't see on my screen but just go ahead and save the schematic somewhere that you guys are used to i'm, I'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to hit save here and uh yeah now the schematic is all set so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of this map. I'm going to hold the control key and then hit open world. And then I'm going to open up my piece map, which like I said, again, you guys can't see the window that I'm actually opening it with. But just needless to say, just choose your open world and that will do the trick. So now let's just say I wanted to place my statue right next, or Skitscape statue right next to mine. So let's go ahead and I'm going to make a quick little selection here because I had a huge selection box over there. I don't want to screw things up. And then on the bottom, on the bottom here, uh, towards the middle, you're going to see a little import button. Just go ahead and hit that and then find out where you ended up saving your schematic to. And uh, go ahead and open that. And there we go. As you can see, 
Skitscape statue in the flesh. Ha! <laughs> totally epic. All right, but let's just say you didn't quite get the selection where you wanted it to be. So what you can do here is you can actually nudge it using the tool on the on the left side there where you can see it says nudge. Since the box itself is actually green, you're only going to be modifying what is in green here. And the entire thing is green, so it's just kind of referring to the selection itself. So once again, the controls are exactly the same. You know, you just hit the, the S key to bring it towards you. All right, well, let's just see. It. I'm not actually going to keep this in my map, but, you know, I just want to give you guys the idea here. Uh, let's see. So let, let me just go ahead and get their arms matched up. There we go. Their arms are perfectly matched up. Now let's see. Yeah, see, his arms are, I believe, one lower than mine. So let's go ahead and let's fix that uh, by using the Q key. And there we go. His arms are perfectly matched up to mine. Let's even, let's, let's bring Skitscape a little bit closer to me. Just a wee, uh, not that close. Not, uh, not that close. Not that close. <laughs> but anyway, so all I have to do at this point, um, and if you guys want to rotate your creations too, you can also use the options on the left. I'm not going to get too much into detail with these ones. Um, they're pretty much self-explanatory, like mirror is mirror and mirrors it below the ground. At least I think that's what it does. I don't even really want to know. Oh, okay, yeah, no, it mirrors it. That was weird that it kind of disappeared when I clicked it just then. <laughs> that was really weird. But as you can see, the little amulet that he's wearing flips back and forth. The flip will literally flip him upside down. Let's, let, you know what? When I import it, I'm going to import it like that. We're going to have an upside down skitscape in this world. And then the roll key is very similar. It'll roll them on different accesses. So now at this point, I actually have him facing the other way. You know, you can't really break your selection doing this. So let's roll him so he's actually upside down. Let's rotate him so he's facing the other way. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing, guys. I'm just sort of going at this here. This is this is quite amusing to mess around with Skitscape in such an amazing fashion. But anyways, uh, so without wasting too much more time here, I'm going to go ahead and hit the import button. And now he is officially in the map. And all, all uh, I would have to do at this point is hold the control key and hit the save button in order to save him. But uh, I'm not going to do that. But then again, even if I did on accident, uh, this is a copied world. So I don't really need to worry about ruining my piece of map. Though I think having an upside down skitscape in my world would not ruin the map at all. That would actually be kind of amazing. He's like levitating above his head here. Like seriously, how awesome would that be to be able to levitate using your head in like a handstand fashion? Anyways, so the, the last thing that I'm going to show you guys in this video is what you can do with mob traps. And this, this is one that I've actually had quite a lot of people ask me, uh, at least not in recent memory, but uh, when I released a video a while back about my peaceful map update, when I actually created a creeper spawner, I had a lot of questions asking, how did I do that? And I've, I've heard you can do it with world edit, but I'm not absolutely sure. But if you want to go ahead and do that, just make a selection, a uh, one by one block selection anywhere in your world. As you can see, I've done that there. And I'm going to choose the fill and replace tool on the bottom and type in spawner. Uh, if I would spell it correctly, that would be fantastic. All right, so there we go. That you see this little mob cage right there. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, click fail, fail. Yeah, failure with, uh, with, uh, with my speaking. Uh, it, this, sh this goes to show that I've been doing this tutorial for way too long now. But anyways, so as you can see, there is what it, what it's called an undefined spawner. And now the way I've actually seen this work, like it's kind of wonky. Like it says to right click, but you right click and it doesn't really work. The, real, the proper way that I've seen, or at least the easy way to right click on it, is get your mouse sort of like over it. Hold left click and then right click. You see that little uh, orange box right there? So hold left click. If this is actually going to work, you know what? I bet this isn't going to work just because I don't want it to. All right, so I figured it out here. So for whatever reason, while I'm recording with Fraps, even when I make a selection on the actual box itself, I cannot actually bring up the menu here. Um, I, this is literally a problem with recording with Fraps. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit the footage here. So the right click menu will actually show up properly. So I'm going to do that as such right now. There we go. So I got the little edit monster spawner thing up right here. So all I have to do is click on that. And then you get a little menu that says you can spawn whatever monster you want. So you can select creeper as it is, or you can choose any one of these. And even if you have like a custom ID or something, if you have mods installed or something, you can actually use a custom uh, monster ID. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select, uh, let's just say, hmm, let's make this a gas spawner. Let's make this interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit OK here. And uh, like I said, this is just a backup of my map. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit Control S to save this. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play uh, in this map, you know, just to show you guys the changes. All right, so let's flip over to Minecraft and let's check out the changes. All right, there we go. So as you can see, uh, my map actually loaded up from a top of my... Uh, 
from the top of my tower here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump off here. Oh, it's Lagosaurus Rex. There we go. But all right. So <laughs> the Skitscape statue upside down is over there and totally like a boss. Uh, so, but first, let me set this off of peaceful mode so I can get the gas that I uh, created the spawner for over here to actually spawn. And yeah, you can see that, like there is never any intention for a gas spawner to ever be made. So you just get a lifelike. Oh my god! Yeah, you get a lifelike gas actually showing up in the spawner box. It's hell on earth, I tell you. Get over here, you weakling. You know what? I'm gonna hide in defense over here. Ooh, you yeah, that's right. You can actually destroy dirt. Uh, all right, here we go. I got an army against you. A one-man army called my bow and arrow. Oh my god, you're way over there. I have no idea if you are nearly in range for me to hit you. I can fight you. Ow. Come over here and say that to my face, coward. Oh my god, they're all just running away from me. But anyways, guys, that's all I pretty much wanted to show you today. What the heck is wrong with you? Oh, I must have hit you with the cannonball. Yeah, anyways, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this MC Edit tutorial slash Minecraft video. My name is Ant Venom, and I bid you all farewell. Thanks so much for watching.